You often see this problem where people do not want to push a tier 2 tower even though their team have taken down all the tier 1 towers. They seem to not want to go across the river because they think that they're going to die. And a lot of the reason why this is is either because of the vision that's provided or how they utilize that vision. And typically like after 10 minutes uh, the wards that you place down are a little bit different to how the kind of laning stages that's being placed even at lower brackets. And a lot of the reason is because the tier 1 towers stop dying and start to die around this time and what players are doing. So this Underlord, instead of keep pushing the lane, so we have this ward here and he can utilize this ward really well and in this scenario he can see anyone who teleports into this shrine and he can also see anyone ganking him. Typically a mid hero might try and rotate up top just walking up to him to try and kill him and instead what he ends up doing is going back to here to teleport back to mid lane and defend it. Now he could have skilled his dark rift and been able to teleport back there but at the same time this ward ends up staying up for like almost two minutes after he leaves and no one's using this ward for anything. There's no one even showing in it because there's no reason for anyone to come top. Even though this tower has taken around 10 or 20 percent damage it could have taken another 20 percent damage if the Underlord just kept pushing the creep waves in. He didn't even need to attack them. Now, by having the creep wave pushed in like this, Underlord is forcing someone to show on the map top. And by Juggernaut being up here, he's not able to go and use Omni Slash somewhere else. However, he was given the opportunity, as you see, his Omni Slash is on cooldown, to go and use it somewhere else. So, this is the last tier 1 tower to die on the dire side. And if we look at instantly what the AA does, he buys observer wards. He's after placing one down here. He's after buying three of them. Here's another observer ward placement. And where does he place the turbo on here? And guess what all of these do? They all just give vision on the river. And there's already a fourth one up here that gives vision on the river that was just recently planted as well. So all these wards are gonna run out at the same time, roughly, because we're all placed near the same duration. Now this ward is a lot better because it gives you vision in this area to push. However, the problem with this ward is this tier two tower taking the tier 2 in the off lane is one of the least valuable towers in the game. The reason why is because if you take this tower the enemy can still just teleport to their shrine. There's very little difference between these two uh, like buildings in terms of teleport ability and even if you look at it this tower if you teleport to this you're teleporting on the low ground. If I was on dire side and I teleported to this spot there can just be someone standing up here and will kill me instantly after that especially if it was something like a pudge or a bounty hunter they'd be scouting around this area. So for the past five minutes this is the only ward that the radiant side has had and it ends up meaning that they can't really pressure any objectives and they don't know what the enemy team is doing whatsoever and the, the dire side constantly have these defensive wards that are never getting dewarded which are kind of questionable having two in roughly the same area and this ward over here doesn't give like much good vision either if you had this like in a deeper spot having it like even placed over at, like this location here you can see the enemy coming up the river but having one really like far back one like this doesn't come to much avail but AA ends up placing a ward here at 29 minutes just there now but this is the first ward that he's placed aggressively in the past 15 minutes meaning that the juggernaut was just allowed to do whatever he wanted same with the doom who's also a hero who goes farming with devour and you don't even get to see their item progression if they're constantly sitting in the jungle and even if you're not going to gank something like the juggernaut just the fact that you can tell that the enemy team is four heroes is a pretty big deal and can sometimes like lead to winning team fights even if you're not going to take advantage of it it's just something that makes it slightly easier for someone even to play aggressive for a gank somewhere to get like a single hero pick off so in this game it's a higher rank it's like the last one was crusader and this one is like mid ancient to high ancient and in this scenario the drow is rotating back into the jungle and meanwhile while drow is moving back and forth into the jungle like this 
the Kunka decides to push down her tower and he can also see her every time before she comes back to the lane because she's coming over here to do the ancient camps and because of Drow's uh, ultimate, her markmanship, she can easily kill ancient camps and it's very predictable what she's going to do and there's only one spot for ancient camps now uh, since one of the more recent patches and you can tell where Drow is going to be so it's hard to know do you really even need a ward to know where Drow is going to be because you can predict ahead of time and smoke gank into her now alternatively what you should be doing is placing down observer wards in this area to be able to see her but instead what ends up happening is she just gets a free reign of her whole jungle here and not one aggressive ward never even contested in any way and the only one that they have is this one over here which is a, a radiant ward that can see drow moving up this direction so now after taking this tier one bottom uh, the dire side is now pushing bottom but the train protector placed down an observer ward here and he also placed another one down up in this location now the good thing about these two ward spots is the fact that if you place down one sentry in the middle say like here you can't actually catch both of them at the same time because they're actually out of range as you'll see even though that they are able to keep this aggressive position like regularly for like two or three minutes here the enemy team comes and punishes them and kills them but as you'll see they have put down one sentry here and another sentry over in this spot to deward both of them because you can't get both of them uh, with one sentry in the position they were placed so now the radiant is going to smoke here and during this smoke they place down an observer ward just up here so this board is really nice and at the same time they end up getting a kill on Luna but no one had vision of them while they place down this observer ward as you'll see pretty soon after this observer ward is placed someone is coming here to try and utilize it they get an X marks the spot because of the vision of the ward but uh, Mars messes up his ultimate and it doesn't turn into a kill even though they're not gonna get the kill here the fact that they're sending someone back to the fountain they waste train protectors ultimate and uh, wind ranger pretty much wastes almost an entire minute trying to heal back up the like, whole pro process of walking back to base and healing up again now you'll see that they probably come back here again today but as you'll see at this rank uh, the players are placing also these defensive wards and also defensive sentries to ensure that the enemy team can't come in and do lots of these aggressive wards very easily and there's a lot more uh, like pretty much a stronger ward game from both teams uh, the drow has just been given so much time to farm up if we have a quick look at the stats look at drow she's level 21 absolutely crazy bonkers right so far ahead and she's never been contested at all to farm any of these camps the dire side have these heroes that are really good at flash farming and having control of their jungle is really important with these heroes but in turn if you look at like the enemy team they have this like kunka ganking hero mars a blink dagger ganking hero slark a ganking hero and what they should be doing is constantly trying to pressure these areas of the map especially at earlier parts of the game it's to a certain extent up to the supports to provide vision because heroes like kunka mars and slark still require items to have a lot of impact to be able to get these kills in these scenarios and to be able to keep up with farm to a certain amount but they never tried to control this part of the map like up here where these tree camps are ever at any point in the game it's like unbelievable but i hope this video helps you understand like this stuff a little bit better of just like placing aggressive vision and how you can take advantage of it and uh, if you want to see more dota videos like this make sure you subscribe now if you had another ward here as well you could see back further where like say the, you could see drow coming pretty much before <laughs> yeah, you can see Drow coming. 